Hi and welcome back everybody. In today's video, we will manually create accounts for several users. Uh, not like we did in the last video where we manually created an account for just one single user. So this time we will create accounts for many users in one go. You can use this bulk authentication method for 3, 50, 100 or more users at the same time. The first thing we have to do is create an Excel sheet or even better a text editor file like Notepad for example. Because Excel sometimes might cause a few issues when bulk uploading users. But it doesn't matter, we're going to do it with Excel first anyway, because that's what most of you guys feel comfortable with. And to be honest, in 99% of the cases, the process does work very well with Excel. Let's bring up a fresh Excel sheet. And we're going to provide four account details in different columns. The first column contains username information. The second column is first name. The third column, last name. And the fourth column is email. Please make sure that all these informations are exactly spelled like I show you here. Otherwise, Moodle won't be able to identify the information and put the users in the right spot. All you have to do now is put the information of the users you want to upload in the rows below. So we could, for example, say we want N Brady with the email address xyz at gmail.com and the username xyz123. And in the next row, you would put the information of the next username and so on. I will show you this in a bit more detail later. Let me just explain you quickly why you require at least these four pieces of information in your sheet for the process to work. If you look at the fields in the user account details, you can see that these information are the minimum required fields. We've got username, first name, surname or last name both work in the Excel sheet and we have the email address. These are the mandatory fields and that's why we have to provide them in our Excel sheet. One thing, the password when you create a single account manually is also a mandatory field, but if you don't have a password column in your Excel sheet, that is fine. Moodle will automatically generate a password for each user that you put in the Excel sheet and we'll send it to their email address once we have uploaded the file to our Moodle site. This is a very good option in my opinion, so you can just leave those four columns and don't have to worry about the password bit. If you want to provide users with your own password, you would have to create a password column. So we would just name this column here, password. Let's make this a bit longer that we can see everything better. So that's the column password. And then down in the cells below, you would insert the password that you want each user to have. So for N, we want to have the very safe password, one, two, three. And we just put it in here. But please remember, if you provide your own password this way, users won't receive an email once their account is created. So you would have to send them an email manually, including the password, so that they can log in the first time. I don't want to do that. I want Moodle to create passwords for me and automatically send them out in emails. So I just delete this password column. By now you have certainly realized that all these pieces of information stand for all the different sections in the user's account details. So you could provide a lot more details if you like. For example, if you want to identify the country of a user, you just create a new column that says country and then name the country of the users in the cells below. So N is from France. That's why we put in France. Again, I don't want to have this information. Users can edit later themselves anyway, so let's get rid of it. But let's discover a few more handy options that you have when creating accounts through Excel Sheets. You could, for example, straight away enroll users in existing courses on your site with that process. All you have to do again is create a new column 
and name it course one, which creates a course information. Then you create one more column and name it role one, which determines the role that the user should have in course one. So we put in here role one. In the course one cells, you would then provide the course short name of the existing course that you want the users to be enrolled in. Let me just quickly show you what the short name of the course is so that you don't get confused. You go to one of your courses and the short name is the one here in the breadcrumbs. It's not the full name up here. So in my case, that would be MFB. And that's what I'm going to put in for N in course one. Once you've done that, don't forget to name the role the users should have in that course. You just go to the role one column and say student because this is the role I want N to have in course one. Let's now go one step further and you could even add the users into existing groups of that course. Again, you would just have to create another column and name it group one. In the cells below, you would then just provide the name of the existing group of the course you have named here on the left. If you don't have a group in the course yet, you can still create a column group one and then provide a group name that you want for a group to be created. So this would then create a group within the course and directly put the users in that group. By the way, the same principle also goes for cohorts. We can easily add our users to existing cohorts in your Moodle site. We just, you guessed it, create another column and name it cohort one. In the cells of that column, we have to provide the ID of the cohort that you want users to be added. Not the name of the cohort, okay? That is important, the ID. If you haven't created any cohorts yet, you can just provide a random ID here, and when you upload the file, it automatically creates the new cohort with the ID you've provided and puts all the users in it. So basically, in this authentication process that we're just doing, you can sign users up, enroll them into courses, add them to course groups, and add them to cohorts. But that's just a quick side info. I have an entire video on how to enroll students in your courses and also how to create cohorts if you like to check that out. Today, we just want to sign a few users up, so we delete the last couple of columns. And that's it. Now you just provide the username, first name, last name and email address of each user you want to create an account for in the different rows, just like I did for N here. Before you do it, and if you like, I will tell you a little trick um, concerning usernames. If you don't want that, just skip to the next part of this video. Usernames should always be consistent across your site. A very common username method is to put first and last name together. In this case, the username would be N Brady. So if you like, you can use a little formula for that column that automatically creates a consistent username based on the information that you give for your first name and your last name. It's very easy to do, I'll show you. In the first cell under username, we create a small formula in the formula bar. So we delete this and have to know that formulas in Excel always start with an equal sign. That's what we put in here. Then we use the word concatenate. So we just type in C-O-N-C and it already shows up for us to select when we just type the first couple of letters in. All you have to do now is double click on it. What this magic word does is it joins pieces of information from cells together. So we want to join the first and last name together. After the word, Excel automatically opened a bracket so that we can define what needs to be connected. We just click on B2 first name, which takes the first name information, then we type a comma and click on C2, which takes the information from last name. Now don't forget to close the bracket and hit enter. So what you can see now is that this column took the information from the first name and the last name and joined them together to our beautiful username. What I usually do is have an underscore in between first and last name. 
All we have to do to achieve that is go back to our formula. So we click on the username and after the comma of B2, we type in a quotation mark. And now we can provide any symbol that we want to have in between the names. So let's say underscore. Close the quotation with another quotation mark and add a comma. When you now click enter, you can see the underscore in the username between first name and last name. If you want to put a dot in between, you just go back to your formula and instead of the underscore, you say dot and click enter again. And this is how you can change the username. Or just leave it with anything in between like we had before and remove that part. There we go. One last thing is important now. You have to drag this formula to all the other rows to be applied there as well. To do that, you click on the cell that has the formula already in it. Select the little square here and drag it all the way down. And now the formula is applied to all these rows as well. So what happens if I provide the first and last name now? Ben James. It will automatically create the username for us. Now if you like, go ahead and add all the information of your users. I will do the same for a couple of users and I will see you here again in a bit. All right, we're back. And as you can see, I have added a few random users. You probably have a lot more than me. But now that we have completed our sheet, we have to save it. And that's a very important part this time. You go usually to save, save as, select your location. And now don't save it like you would usually do with an Excel file. So with the ending XLS or XLSX. Don't do it with that. You want to save it as a CSV file, this one here, because this is working way better with Moodle. Click on it and save it as you usually do. Before we upload the file to Moodle, let me just quickly show you how this would look when you use a text editor like Notepad. So what you can see, it is very similar to the CSV file we created, but the different pieces of information is just separated by commas instead of being in individual cells. But now that we have created our files, we finally go to our Moodle site and as always go to site administration and select users from the tab. Let's quickly check the list of existing users by clicking on browse list of users. And what you can see is there's only one user, which is the admin and that's me. So one step back, to the user overview, we click on upload users. Now you can choose your file from the location you saved it on your computer or, and that's what I always do, drag and drop the CSV file in this box here. Don't worry about all the other stuff, you just click upload users. This gives you an overview of what Moodle has identified as users from your CSV file. And you can just make sure that all the users are on the list by maybe checking the first one and the last one. The first setting here is really an important one. With the first option in the drop down menu, it adds all new users and skips the one that already have an account on your site, just in case you accidentally added them to your list, even though they are already on your Moodle site. If you click on at all, it creates another account for existing users, which can become very, very messy and should be avoided. What you can do though, is say you want to keep existing users, but update their account details with the information you provided in your sheet. And you can even use this process to simply update existing user accounts if you like. We keep it on this one. And let's have a quick look at the password setting because this is the password setting that we talked about earlier. We decided not to have a password column. So we select create password and send it via email. If you have your password columns, you can select this one here. We just put it back where it was. Don't worry about the rest of the settings. Just click upload users. This now gives you another overview to see who's been created, if there's been any errors, but everything seems to be fine. And we're just going to click continue. 
And what we can check now is we can go to our user list, as we did before, browse list of users, and you can see that all these users have an account on your Moodle site. So this is how you bulk upload users. If you enjoyed the video, you can subscribe to my channel if you like, and see you next time. Take care.